This is my in-depth review of the all-new Mercedes S-Class, including autobahn driving and a nighttime driving feature. Let's go! You're watching Autogefühl with Thomas and the all-new Mercedes S-Class V223, so the standard US version or the one with long wheelbase in Europe. Here in the AMG line, that means a sportier styling here in the front, but it's not as sporty as, for example, when you compare E63 versus normal E-Class. Here, the AMG styling is the most prominent thing is actually here in this part, this air intake, the grille doesn't look too different. And also in the S-Class, the AMG still gets the standing star in the front, which is, you know, it just fits to the S-Class. And I think it's good that they kept it here with this model. Then the lamps come standard with multi-beam LED function and optional, the so-called digital light with micro mirrors, which can also project things on the road, actually. And here, just only one daytime running light stripe. I think that's not a good decision. They now differentiate it with dots. So the S-Class gets three dots, the E-Class two dots inside, and the C-Class one. Hmm. Okay, can we just repeat this shot and show it once more? Look how the stars mirroring in the front hood and the light reflects. Ooh. And you have this huge sensor area. They are hidden behind this one. It looks fancy, but what I found out by mistake is like when you squeeze it, you hear that? Uh -uh, uh -uh. That doesn't sound too good, right? Oh, and what I always love, you when have dark exterior color and then the bright interior color, mixes so well this contrast, right? The length is at 5 meters 29 or 208 inches, has grown a little bit in length if you compare it to the predecessor. And wheels come actually from 18 to 21 inch, these here are the 20-inch wheels, and I think they have a very interesting styling. Would you notice what the color is? Oh, yeah, the door handles go in. I just touched them here, yeah, barely, so they fold in and out. Zoom more deal to that. So the color here, it looks black, right? But if you look closely, it has some brown shade, so it's actually a very, very dark brown. Or black with brown accentuations? I don't know. Classic for an S-Class is here, this bow right there from the you know, from a C pillar here, this is how you actually realize it's an S-Class and the end of the bow is almost here at the center of the back wheel in the middle part like this. This is the typical S-Class design element and the typical sedan shape. Rear axle steering is a big highlight here in the rear axle. You can see it also from these shots and it's the most important technology feature, I think, because the rear wheels can go up to 10 degrees in the opposite direction, and that actually reduces the turning circle by two meters. That's enormous. And as I mentioned, is standard. Optional, you can get the e-active body control that the car can also a little bit lean into the corner. The rear looks sleeker than before, and here these tail lamps make it at the same time wider, so a more fluent design here. This is general at the moment theme of the Mercedes design language, but it also looks, you know, less differentiating if you compare the smaller Mercedes sedans. S500 is our version for today. Always comes with all-wheel drive, says 4MATIC right here, has a rear-wheel bias. Then, out of the fake exhaust police because the real exhaust on the inside. Yeah, but then this hmm, extended tip. I don't know. What do you think? I think not. <laughs> so far, only with BMW. Here now at Mercedes, when you open the hood, pull it twice and then it's actually opened. That's really the cool thing. Yes, I'm showing the standing star once again. <laughs> That's the cool thing here. Then you can just lift it up and there it is. And you have three liter six cylinders and also four liter V8. And then the 12 cylinder for the Maybach version. You can also find the review here on our channel. And then there are the diesels, three liter diesels for Europe. And this one here, the S500, 430 horsepower, 4.9 seconds in the acceleration. And there will also be plug-in hybrids. Door closing sound. Yeah, really cool. It has some kind of vintage closing sound as well. So that's interesting. And there's also soft close here. When you approach the vehicle or you open it with the key fob, then the door handles fold out. And yeah, I'm not too convinced of that. You can press it here then again to close it. And then also, you know, when you approach it again, it should also open. Yeah, like this. 
But I think it's making things just complicated actually. Then inside of the door, beautiful job here with the matte wood interior actually. And there's the light switch that also works pretty, you know, pretty well, easy. But then here there's one button philosophy. So this is like one button field for the seat cooling, seat heating, also the memory function. And it just appears cheap when it's like just one button with this capacitive function. These are better, the window levers, definitely. Then this is the AMG line also on the interior. So we have AMG floor mats and also these aluminum pedals and the AMG steering wheel, which has a good handle. It's really nice while driving. It has these two horizontal spokes right there. This is really interesting. It looks cool and also the size is great. But then once again, the capacitive buttons where you have to slide and that's especially while driving again not a step forward but rather backward the seats here and a very luxurious design these cushions here are amazing they are just so soft and covered with microfiber for the main seats only animal skin available from stock you can also request an all fabric interior and i all think this should be in the configurator and also a full leatherette option like tesla is offering should also be in the configurator like a high grade one so they need to step things forward right there. As for the seating position, super, super comfortable. I just love it. It's very soft, very plush, and especially long-term. I've also driven this car now in you know, almost 800 kilometers in our test here, and this was no problem at all. And for me it's 86 or 6 with 1, still leaves some headroom. This is the one then here with a panoramic roof, which has these rather complicated sliders. We may have a little bit of practice, but again, real buttons would be better there. And another major fail is here. This unit for the seat, it's look, looking still cool, but you cannot move this thing. So back in the past, for the previous generation, you could move these elements and then they were doing something. Now you kind of touch them and then the seat moves, but it doesn't give you feedback. Interior overview, 12.3 inch digital instruments, 12.8 inch central screen. And this is here all piano lacquer, so this collects so much scratches and fingerprints and so on. But here, this area with the wooden atmosphere, matte wood, just listen to that. This is so beautiful, awesome. And everyone who's looking at that vehicle said, oh my God, this looks amazing from the inside. The looks. What about the user interface? Going to take a look at that. But first of all, finish the looks here, the air mats on the top part. They also belong to the you know, screaming out features. And of course, the ambient lighting, which is, for example, also changing if you control temperature, like here, warmer, then you have these red stripes and colder, you have these blue ones. That looks amazing. And steering wheel, once again, great form. It feels so much sportier in the AMG line with the AMG line steering wheel. But I'm not happy with the capacitive buttons here, also, for example, for the volume control and so on. The head display is always hard to see, but it offers a lot of information, and even some augmented reality function. Hey, and seen that? Yes. Mercedes star. You can also watch it here from inside the cockpit. That's of course a main thing always. Instruments, you can see here the blinking IR, so infrared sensors, and they are only visible here on camera. You do not see them with your own eyes. And they are watching you, they are controlling you. Ooh. <laughs> then here, the fuel economy. This is excellent, actually. This was not predominantly motorway driving with cruise control. And that would mean 9 liters per kilometer is 26 mpg US, 31 mpg UK. However, when you, you know, think more in realistic terms and so on, this can also be higher, of course, than something 10, 11 liters or some 20 mpg US, some 25 mpg UK when you drive more city or when you drive a little bit faster and so on. This was here the ideal consumption. This is not flickering in real life, by the way, only again, just on camera. Yeah, I can make it a little bit less, yeah, like this. So it really depends on the camera setting. And then you can see it also here live. Um, this is then the map all over the screen, but you also have different views, like for example, this here, assistance systems view, um, or this view is different. And then also the, the whole styling in the central infotainment change. Hey, Mercedes. How can I help? What's the difference between Mercedes and BMW? Super. Business is all about competition. <laughs> hey, Mercedes. How may I help you? Set temperature to 22 degrees. Temperature is 20 degrees. 
Not 22, but at least 20. <laughs> Details to the screens here, the temperature control always stays in the same place. That's good. However, it's just more effort to do it like this than with physical buttons. And here in the lower part, this one button, this is like one, this whole thing is one button. That's so weird. And here also a slider for the volume, for example. I think that really downgrades the otherwise fantastic interior indeed. Here, the software, you can see here the Apple CarPlay integration and the sound system here, Burmester sound system is really amazing. When you pump it up really loud, yaw, <laughs> and then also have good bass and so on, you really feel it in, you know, in your feet actually down there. This is so amazing, so a great sound system, really a big fan of it. Then you can go back to the Mercedes menu with the home screen, it looks like this. And the GPS is right here. And it's also, let's say, somewhat responsive enough. And also has good route guidance. I tested that yesterday on the motorway. So I'm um, also, you know, had a good rerouting and so on. So I'm actually then happy with that. So most of the time I've probably used the car internal GPS and then the Apple CarPlay system. Other interesting features are for sure here comfort because there you can pick different massage and the wave massage is my very favorite one. Also put it too intensive. And then it really goes like in these dots here from the top part, not sure if you can hear that on the microphone, to the lower part and also really on the seating area. This is really amazing. And the ambient lighting, another favorite feature of course, where you can really set the different colors and so on. You can also see then here on the top right there, red maybe, yes it's, oh there it is. Um, pink style, yeah, it's more red here, because of the AMG, maybe. You can also pick multi-color, then um, it has kind of, come, you know, kind of dissolving into the right doors and so on and so on. And brightness, of course, always all the way up. Oh, and that's nice here, look at that. The visor, sun visor, is kind of double. You can fold down this, and then you have here and here, actually. Yeah, including this annoying warning sign, but it's mandatory. In the lower area, you can slide this one open, adaptive cup holders, but they work for very big bottles. For, you know, taller bottles, they wobble and around these bottles, so not ideal. And two USB-C chargers, smartphone inductive charger, but it's like way deep in there, so not the most like, uh, practical solution. So, um, you know, in this case, then schmoozy is hidden there. <laughs> and uh, here's another area to put things, actually, like a microfiber towel. And then you can have this split opening here, two more USB-C charging, and also another inductive charging mat. Rear seating area also looks amazing. Same seat structure with the quilting. And then we also have the rear seat entertainment, but mm, I'm not so sure about crash safety for these. Definitely better without them. And then there's also another tablet here in the middle part. However, you can get a four-seater with a fixed middle console, or this one here, this is the five-seater version, which has the possibility to make it five seats or then fold down this console. At the inside of the rear passenger door, you can press this button and then that front seat moves like this forward. It takes a while, it goes also a little bit more upward. For the driver then, it does block the view to the right front, so that is a safety issue indeed for the chauffeur. But, well, here that's then all about the comfort Right here, look at that leg room that is building up there. And also then here, the footrest is right here for most comfort. And then it looks like this, so super relaxing. However, with one with A6 or 6 of 1, you could not fully stretch your legs. You need to be like 180 or 5 foot 9. Then you can also really fully stretch your legs. Or another trick is to be like a little bit sideways then it's also better but I mean nevertheless it's very nice to relax right here and do something else just have that enormous space and then again you can make it five to four seater and have another cubby hole right here with USB-C charging and also in the lower part you have more USB-C and H also HDMI control so you can have um, you know some interface for the screens and so on so this is a very cool atmosphere and the rear cushions here just again are oh, amazing, super comfortable. My favorite feature of this vehicle actually. And now the rear ones here can also be heated. And as you can see here, there's ventilation for the rear seats and heating and also at the same time. For what is that? Well, for example, it's winter time and you got wet in rain or something. Then you can dry 
and be warm at the same time. And from here you can also control that rear shade. Well, on this tablet here in the rear you can pick the massage functions for the rear seats. However, the wave massage for the front seats is not available here in the rear, but yeah, at least we have some other possibilities and you can control right and left and this is also really sophisticated. And you can also control it here right there on the screen is also touch. And now welcome to Thomas's passive driving lounge being chauffeured. Cornelius was <laughs> so nice to do it here today because we always take your feedback seriously. You want to see when we review a luxury sedan class, you always show me being driven. And of course the first thing I would do right here is activate this lying position and just one press of a button right here and I mean but already the normal position is super comfortable here in that seat. It's of course always spectacular to see how it moves forward and upward and so on. It does block the view for Cornelius then a little bit to the right front but yeah here then it's about the VIP being chauffeured right here and I was just driving in the Audi A8 in the rear and I really have to say the seat here is way more plush so even without this function here, of course in the A8L you also have this kind of chauffeur function, but the seating itself I feel is more comfortable here with the S-Class and my shoes are gladly um, clean so I can also put them on here, but um, yeah, even in the Maybach I cannot stretch my legs completely, so, um, but still, I mean it's a very comfortable position here, really relaxing and now being on the motorway zone so um, I could take out my, you know, Take out my smartphone and um, check some emails or, or for example uh, or just relax a little bit. It's a little bit hot today. I can um, activate the seat cooling here. Ambient lighting is also followed right here and I also have the shade right here. So oh, oh that's the shade. It's the upper shade here and then here I have the control for the rear shade behind me. That one. Let's see here. Yeah, here we go. And I can also lower these shades here in the side windows. But yeah, actually to have some more privacy and a um, little bit less um, impact from the sun, that's of course a good idea. Middle console, I can fold down here for that screen because when it's like this, I cannot reach the screen right there, um, you know, without leaning uh, forward all the way. So that's actually then a practical thing to have. So now I got the tablet running, I have uh, basically all the functions mirrored, I have there also in the front. Then I can also activate the different massage forms. Um, for example, here on the activating massage and wow, that's really so relaxing. It's a very, very sophisticated massage. That's what I really fancy. So yeah, massage function is probably the thing that I would um, do most of the time in here with this tablet in, in my hand. Um, or maybe also change a little bit of the um, ambient lighting or so on from here. So at least from here, when you play around with the ambient lighting right here, then you're not distracted as a driver is and then you can just enjoy the different colors here. I mean these cushions, these cushions here are so comfortable and they can also be heated in the rear. That's of course another great comfortable feature. Suspension wise also the S-Class has the most plush air suspension I would, I would say. If you also compare Audi A8 and BMW 7 series so yeah I think for the rear passenger the S-Class really leads it because the other ones, BMW 7 Series and Audi A8, are more fun to drive yourself. But the S-Class is better when being driven. Trunk space is 550 liters or 12 cubic feet and the length here is yeah, almost 120 in meters or 47 inches. And you see here, vertical wave for the cabin trolley is actually no problem. And loading things through actually just works via this middle ski hatch. You have to open it from the rear and like twice and here like hello oh and then it stays open that's a cool feature oh and then through the ski hatch you directly look through the infotainment system wow that's an amazing perspective isn't it just found out about that super interesting hey welcome at night and what a great song what a great song gotta check this out here maybe watch a youtube Review. <laughs> Review. Just Google it. Google it. YouTube search on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> so, but we want to experience the car and of course don't want to get any copyright issues with the automatic you know, recognition of songs and so on. 
This is original Thomas Driving Lounge here at night with the Mercedes S Class S500 on 430 horsepower from this 3 liter inline six cylinder. And this also has mild hybrid technology here now. So when I'm on the brakes, this EQ charge meter goes up. And so I can regenerate some of the power back again. This helps the fuel economy. And you can drive this car actually, you know, very efficient. So my best result for long-term motorway driving is indeed some nine liters and more kilometers which is then some 30 mpg. That's excellent for this kind of engine, for this kind of size. Of course, if you have more city traffic, then it's more going, oh, look at that, the adaptive light, the digital light is already active. Oh, it's also illuminating the speed camera. Very dangerous at night, you cannot see it before. Wow, it begins here directly with spectacular action. You can see here how the, you know, how the left and right is illuminated and then cars in front of me are being spared out that they are actually not being blinded by the light. So that's a great feature indeed and it's just done automatically and we will more and more experience we're going way through the dark into the countryside that we can see more of that light and I mean from both cameras. I mounted this camera here today a little bit more behind that you can also see this area here to the right how it looks so cool when it's illuminated at night and even continue further onto the rear seating. This is actually one of my favorite features both in the new S-Class and also in the Mercedes EQS that they look so extremely stunning at night. This brings so much more emotion to it you know and I just love driving this car at night. The standard air suspension is set on a, such a soft tone that you really still feel that's an air suspension. And then you put on your favorite songs, put on your favorite ambient lighting, and you can just really like flow through the night, I would call it that way. It's really excellent. Steering input is also very natural, I like that. So you don't have to steer too much. It's not super progressive though, but it feels very natural. And here with the AMG line steering wheel, the car is indeed better to control and feels sportier just by this smaller size steering wheel. I really do prefer that. So that would be my number one reason to go for the AMG line, that you get this steering wheel. Both have the BS capacitive buttons on the steering wheel anyway. So then at least you can pick the sportier one. <laughs> I'm not the one with the, I always call it with the famous slot. You heard me, slot design. In the, it also has a slot design here, this one, but the other one has a slottier design. <laughs> Can you call it that way? Wow, that looks amazing now in this camera, right? Wow, I mean, I, I see the picture myself. Wow, this is slow. Then here, traffic light view, red traffic light. There is, you can see, you see here the red traffic light. Uh, because sometimes it can happen when you're like standing, you know, in a critical situation towards the traffic light, you cannot see it. Then you see it here on the screen. At first, I, I was thinking like, this is a really lazy feature, but um, there are some situations where it is indeed really useful. When we're driving up here here now, I can put it to the sport mode and we can also hear something more from the engine, but it's really, you know, the dampening is really subtle and such a good insulation from the vehicle. You, I mean, you probably hear it, you almost hear nothing from the outside. That's just fantastic with this vehicle. And there are a lot of things we can play around with, especially at night here in the infotainment system. This always has to be said, you know, there comes now a big disclaimer. Do not do it while driving. I'm not a good example of what I'm doing right now. I have some practice doing it. <laughs> and I really try to focus still on the road. I mean, yeah, but it's always somewhat dangerous to play around with that screen. That's always the thing why I also prefer manual climate knobs. At least they stay in the same place here all the time. And I can show you when I'm changing the temperature here. Now it's you know, getting a little bit colder outside now, though it has been a warm and nice day. Here when I put it warmer now, we have this, wow, I mean, it goes all the way into the doors. It looks so amazing. 
when I want it colder again, the same thing happens then with the blue light, no matter which light I have initially set it to. And this is still also one of my favorite emotional features. And it's not such a complicated move to program that, but it's such a great idea. So whoever had that idea, I mean, I know a lot of Mercedes engineers are always watching, so greetings to you also as well. Um, yeah, and then they ask me about certain things I didn't review. I asked them actually about certain things they built. And so there's also a very good and interesting exchange and also a way that when you write comments about this vehicle here, I can transport these comments through to the engineers and they also read it in the comments themselves. And so indeed it has, when you comment on this video, then it can really have an effect, for example, on the face tip of this vehicle, what can be made better and what needs to be corrected or something or improved and so on. And this is, this is just fantastic that it works this way, you know, nowadays. And of course, everything also thanks to our great community we have here on Autogopur, such, you know, positive and constructive feedback discussion here always. People who are really car enthusiasts enjoy the stuff we're doing here at this moment the same way as I do. That's why we are all here, because we share this common passion. That's what I also love about you know, my job here and especially with you guys in the community. Well, now we're all dark here. With, that looks so amazing. You know, this shot and of course this as well. And here, now you can see once again the digital light. Now we have like full power, full throttle in the front, full light throttle. Wow. This look goes so far, and I mean, you know, this reflective, reflective um, layers here on the, on the signs, <laughs> it reflects so much, and I almost say like, it reflects too much, actually. Now this uh, hairpin corner is coming ahead. That looks also really very well illuminated. See how there it builds up again, wow. That actually, you seen that? There, it saved some parts out. Me Interesting. Maybe that's because of, it's maybe thinking like, oh, there's, um, when, when something is reflecting, that might be a car or something. That could be. Wow, have you seen that? There were parked car at the side of the roads and the light spared out the vehicles which were parked at the side of the road. That's super interesting. And you only experience that really when you do such an extensive night drive. And I really this time, you know, like took a lot of time with this vehicle, drove it almost like a thousand kilometers now that they could really share, you know, even more experience with you. We have almost full moon. So this is like a really moody night ride we have here. And we have the colors here for the ambient lighting and we have also the brightness effect. And you can, not tune it all the way up or I can tune it all the way down. Look at that, how it looks like here. Look at that. I'm disappeared. And now you see like, this is the huge difference. This would be the vehicle without any ambient lighting. And we know a lot of vehicles that do not have that. Look at that, how, what a difference it's make. And like half, it's all like, wow, amazing. And let's see the difference, full off. So I'm intentionally driving very slow now, just, you know, for safety precautions. And then all the way up. Oh, no. Yeah, that's what happens. What, what, what happened there, you know? Did I some... I have no idea what I... What the... Okay, brightness. Here we go. Full off. And now let's move it full on. Yeah. Energize. But, oh, we have changed the color. So monochrome colors. This is my like, you know, ocean blue is really, but, oh, there's a multicolor like this. So you can pick the individual. <laughs> this is like, you know, <laughs> like a circus, you know? <laughs> Here you could also go, for example, for a green one like this. Fits in when I'm driving a little bit slower, more and more efficient, maybe more on this spectrum here. I mean, it all looks somewhat amazing. Um, or more like pink. This looks, oh, oh, that's deer. Oh, sweet. This is one actually, very slowly now. I've seen the light here building up, so it jumped off, off the road. So especially like in that time, of course, we have to be 
even more precautious here in the countryside routes. Wow, this is really, Im there, it, there it is. I hope you can really see that very well on camera, um, how it sometimes closes and then builds up like a cascade once again to have the full lighting. This is really spectacular. And this looks also amazing. Oh, what I also really like is here this, you know, some kind of purple color. Mm, I think this, you know, this purple color always looks so, like so special, you know, that it would be something unique. That's, I think, um, the thing of that. So, um, or maybe like a little bit more in the bluish too, like this one, you know, this is more like a purple style. I think it also looks really amazing. And let's go to the multicolor mode. There you can see actually that um, you see you have here like a like a dissolve from the middle part, then through the outside parts, left and right. This looks also really, really spectacular. Yeah, I mean, you don't even know where to look at, like ambient lighting, infotainment screen, how the light is being built up and back again. You know, when we have um, lanterns on the street, there it is, you know. Then it goes back again, so like, ah, okay, we're in like the rural side, there's lanterns, and then there are like people, car, other cars around. And when the, there it is, lanterns are gone, full light throttle automatically again, and this is really cool. And because it can really, you know, kind of, kind of, uh, you know, take off some of the individual pixels from that, individual LEDs. And this one is even working here with this, you know, with these micro mirrors, which can serve as projectors even. So in future scenarios, something can be projected onto the road for us, for example. You can so individualize the light that you're not blinding others. And I mean, I remember, especially like from the, you know, most recent Land Rovers, like a, or a Range Rover Vela or something, with the automatic head, the headlamps, with high beam, um, the function was working, but it was blinding all cars all over the place. And I always got reactions like from people like, what are you doing? It's like, sorry, I'm just, it's a car, it's to be done automatically. So I always had to deactivate that function in the Vela because so many people were like, hey, you, you know, what, what, what the hell are you doing? You're absolutely blinding us. And I was like, well, what, what are these? Ah, okay, they're complaining because of the light. That was very interesting. So here we go now again. There should, the light should build up. There it is. And then full light throttle. Meanwhile, we have other, whoa, that looks fancy, like with a contrast to the top and the bottom. That looks really fancy. This one, jungle green, Venice pink. I mean, this is also wow. And then driving with that one through Venice. Yeah, Malibu sunset. This is also really amazing, right? Really a way to be back um, in the States as well. As soon as Corona regulations allow it. Wow, and this is also really, I mean, I love this ambient. I mean, when it's more multicolor, it's even more spectacular. And let's just use it now, you know, because we're right here at the motorway, have it on multicolor, and we're to, to sports mode. And why not do it sports plus, you know, for the sake of fun and this multicolor lighting. Let's go 50 kilometers an hour and accelerate it out. Let's go. That's 200, 125 miles an hour. And how silent the car is, is just amazing. That is just amazing. And how well the cars are controlled. And look how far we can see ahead with this light. That's really amazing. Sports plus, 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 sports plus mode here. Suspension is also a little bit stiffer. I have more control of the vehicle. And it's definitely one of the best silent cars on the road, so well insulated, 
now on the brakes and considering it's such a heavy car still feels very good in control while braking. It is not the sportiest sedan so BMW 7 series or an Audi A8 do feel way sportier indeed yes so that's the question what you prefer. Mm, here in the S-Class the special thing is that you still get this carpet alike driving feeling that's also I think a really cool thing to have. Malibu sunset another time like this <laughs> and then we have these energizing comfort features this is also interesting so they combine actually like um, you know like the vents climatization and ambient lighting for driver or why is it separated this is like refresh now then we also have the animation here in the screen and I also feel like you know is also using this scent machine perfume machine which can be quite annoying at times. Oh, it's like a vehicle fail. Now I have also this kind of, you know, perfume scent. And I also have a massage, you now like a vibrating massage in the seat. Very interesting. So this is kind of to, to waken me up a little bit. Oh, and then the, um, the, um, the seat ventilation is also on. That's interesting. Wow, very cool function. So interesting to have these different schemes. And this is then really to like, like, Thomas, don't sleep yet. Let's wake it up. I mean, we have almost midnight. So I really took this night ride as authentic as possible, joining me here midnight in the vehicle. It looks really cool with this animation here. And there, yeah, we, I'm not sure, can you see it on camera? The almost full moon. There's even sound here coming from that. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, maybe you can't see it, but it's really almost full moon. So this creates also this very special atmosphere here. So we've tested that one. Now we are exit of the motorway and we'll soon get on it again. There's something sound like music happening here as well. Can you hear that? Can you hear that? So and then warmth, cozy warmth by means of heated seats and surfaces with yellow, whatever. It's a Ooh. Now we get this one and I get seat heating and the traffic light view. Thank you. No, that, that's not part of it. So this anim uh, animation now, heated seats. And I haven't seen, have you seen if the temperature changed as well? I didn't pay attention to that. So maybe we can pay attention to that next time. Then we have vitality provided by stimulating light and stimulating light. What's that supposed to mean? Let's see. Whoa. Interesting. Look at that. Oh, the light is changing. Indeed. That's interesting. I also have some sound peeping and also the seat massage is active. Wow. I haven't, haven't ever tried all of these features yet. I mean, so, um, is that music copyrighted? Hmm, the YouTube algorithm will know. Afterwards, I'll take the chance. <laughs> That's also very interesting. So then, joy, relaxation and sunlight lift your mood. Ooh. They have really cool animations here, right, in the screen. That's cool. Still have some seat massage. But it's still so warm. I mean, just the short period of seat heating made it really warm. I have to put on the seat cooling now once again. So that was joy. There even more well-being. Enhance your feeling of well-being using warmth and soft colors. Let's see. Different color change here. The animation. Ooh. And also this moody music, just like very subtle in, in the background. And people riding this bus there probably look over and think like, what the hell is this guy doing? He's like playing games in his car or, or something. <laughs> well, we are kind of playing games, right? So um, in a way. Oh, there's another um, scent, you know, like a, 
this really smells like a, like a very expensive perfume. This is a nice scent, you know. So I'm not sure if it like will would be annoying over time or something, but this is really wow. Very impressive. So this is kind of, you know, using technology in a nice and surprising way, you know, that they can combine all these features together there. This is really, you know, one of the things where you can say king of luxury here. Very interesting. Well, what about training? Exercise for relaxing muscles and activating or improving activeness. Okay. Muscle simulation. What? Ten minutes? Small, subtle movements. Really? Muscle now? And the of your back. But current, con unavailable at current speed? Interrupt the exercise as soon as the traffic situation requires. Okay. Carrying out the training exercises lies within your responsibility. Yes, ma'am. Select a straight posture for all exercises that follow. Yeah, probably it's more like, you know, that we can see the content when the Start car is staying. Your right shoulder far back in circles. <laughs> your motion is restricted due to the fact that your hand is on the steering wheel. Yeah, Keep I know. Keep your hand steady on the steering wheel. Yes, ma'am. And Make can I also do acceleration? Goodbye. Okay, I I rather concentrate now on high speed motorway driving at night, right? So um, that's the thing. But. That's now interesting. Your left shoulder far okay. Back in yeah, I know, I know. Okay. I said cruise control, but yeah, maybe like the workout is not the best thing to do now. Then so. Make the yes, yes, thank you, goodbye. Tips for spontaneous exercise for various reasons. Now, both shoulders together to uh, the back. Your shoulder blades should almost. Let's touch. go back to vitality. That was cool. So, now cruise control here on the motorway while enjoying the vitality. And the cruise control is holding me speed-wise, distance-wise, car in front of me. And also, at higher speeds, really controlling if I'm going left or right. Holding me very well here in the lane and also with a very smooth process. Now there's a vehicle approaching that's even driving faster than me. Also possible. Blind some auto and... Oh, this will probably cost you the driver's... Lane. Yeah, realize it now. <laughs> So we had to reduce the speed now. Wow, that music is now a little bit, maybe a little bit. Of, whoa, woo! We're in a music concert. Well, you can. I mean, it's good that you can actually adjust that, you know, and you can also turn it off. And here at the steering wheel, and good thing is also, while well, one click on this slider is muting the volume, and that's actually it. Wow, I mean, this has been nice experience here at night and I could do this for hours and hours and just let me know if you really like this special content here at night. Daytime driving with even more car features, normal car features so to speak, is coming up right now. But tell me in the comments please if you like this night drive, dri night time driving special and if you want to see that with more cars and if yes then with what vehicles do you want to see these night rides here and um, if we should make them separate or if we should include them in the review let me know what you think and wow this have been this has been really an immersive experience together with you guys now let's switch on the lights welcome to the German motorway now at day sports mode we are at a hundred kilometers an hour and let's see Up, that's 160 kilometers an hour. That went quite quick. The engine not that notable actually, so rather subtle. The six cylinder we have here in the S500, but still quick acceleration. And in the sports mode, we also have some more feedback from the suspension, so it gets a little bit stiffer. Still, even in the sport mode, the car is set in comfort and, wow, I mean, Ooh, this is so silent here, 170 kilometers an hour and you hardly hear anything, so the noise insulation is yeah, probably the best in the industry or among the best in the industry. That is so cool. And I really like this AMG steering wheel. As for you know the steering input, looks and you know 
how I can touch it uh, from the you know from the from the form from the size and so on yeah I think capacitive buttons they still get on my nerves also when using the cruise control and so on here at the moment road is locked so I can just as well use the cruise control and it immediately also sets in with the lane keeping assist and you're supposed to keep your hands on the steering wheel here with the level 2 system. Level 3 system is available now with the S-Class and allowed in some markets. Um, and this is really interesting. We have an EQS driving review with an autonomous level 3 demonstration. That's very, very interesting. But you can see, didn't even touch the steering wheel. Car is being held in the lane. Very impressive. And how smooth it is, you know, like not like wobbling around and, and stuff, and still not uh, saying I have to get now. I get the information, and oh, that even went away without me doing anything. So, usually it's capacitive here, you know, the steering wheel, so I just have to touch it, and then that's it. Here, like this. There, there we go. And the warning message is gone, actually. So, very impressive how the assistance systems work here in this all new S Class. and the whole driving dynamics, the whole driving feeling, the calmness in the interior, this has even more been improved. And my point once again was, or is, the user interface is worse than before. Everything else, driving wise and so on, is better than before. Yeah, it's still some kind of a trade-off for sure, but I mean, driving wise, the vehicle still amazes me. This is such a cool ride. Once again, the long wheelbase version or the US version V223 we are driving here now. So, especially relevant for all US viewers. And this is globally the S Class. So, they develop the S Class from this version, from the long wheelbase one, and then cut something out for the short wheelbase, basically. Usually, it's the other way around when driving, you know, when developing short and long wheelbase vehicles here, they really start with the long wheelbase. Interesting, by the way, that I see in the head up display, like a like a mark where the car in front of me is but I wonder like what is this kind of over technology um, why do I need like a like a line a digital line following the car in front of me I see that car you know but I don't get it really like that's I think just playing around with technology without having much sense in it I think you know well, the car literally drives itself. <laughs> so this is also the reason you can relax pretty much here, uh, especially on long motorway rides. And uh, this soft cushion is just really amazing. At the same time, you always have enough power reserves also to do some nice accelerations as we've shown to you. And now it gets also interesting because we'll switch motorways, so from one to another. And motorway changing in Germany is, to me, more fun even than using the unlimited high speed we have at some motorways, not at all, and also not like really long parts, usually not, because these motorway changes, they are always, you know, connected with some nice curves and bends and so on. Um, this is a lot of fun, actually. So here we go. Brake feeling, by the way, also very decent. You do feel the weight of the vehicle in the corners, that's for sure can't deny that it's a big car so if you think about for example S class versus E class then the E class will give you more driving dynamics and meanwhile with all the technology packed in so this has been a scheme um, over the last few years you know so so often have we seen that the small cars already get now what the big cars are even like really down below to an A class or something so more and more features are not especially unique anymore to the very, very big segments. Yeah, that indeed speaks against going for the high spec model. I mean, some things are newly introduced, like the augmented reality head up display and so on, and screens in the middle and some. But again, yeah, controlling that screen or the temperature while driving is really doubtful. What's not doubtful is that we still have a good acceleration, so. Yeah, couldn't get so fast here in the corner, but at least now. To cancel that acceleration. Oh, leave that SUV by. Yeah, but you see here, the inner changing between accelerating and braking again is really decent. 
and now we're already at 200 kilometers now, 125 miles now. I mean, <laughs> especially our US fans must be like, this guy is somehow nuts because like, oh, you know, we're at 200 kilometers, 125 miles now. Yeah, 90% 90 of the world's population have never driven at that speed and this guy, oh, you know, yeah, it's Germany, it's business as usual. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes it still is. There will probably be a speed limit coming ahead in Germany and there's big discussion about it, of course, and I always say you have to differentiate between what you like driving yourself and what is actually better for society to do. Mm, yeah, and that doesn't have, you know, to be equal always, you know. Here at higher speeds also, you know, when you shake it a little bit up, shake it up. So, yeah, you feel the air suspension is still set, set on a soft tone, even if you are in a sports mode. So you feel the car is moving somewhat, but that's also, let's say, okay, because it differentiates this vehicle, the S-Class, and especially when you go to the comfort driving mode, when you have some waves inside here, you know, inside the road, then it really goes like, whoa, floating, like, without being too exaggerated or something. But when you would have an Audi A8 or a BMW 7 Series, for example, they rather have the sporty approach also in the base version and the S-Class is more, once again, the luxury comfort focus with a rather floating air suspension. And I think as for air suspension, that's good because I enjoy, for example, like the BMW adaptive suspension is one of the best suspension there is in their big vehicles and you don't need an air suspension then actually. But when you go for an air suspension, I think the Mercedes approach is cool that you still tell the customer Hey guys, this is an air suspension. You feel it because you're like flying in the air. That's, I think, a cool approach and it has to be that way. With the AMG models by Mercedes, they still pick the air suspension nowadays and then make it so stiff that, the, is that an air suspension? Wait a minute, that's even worse in comfort than an air suspension. What is this? You know, I think that's totally unnecessary. Why would you do that? You know, then you couldn't go for another, you know, normal steel spring or whatever, you know, or make it adaptive dampers or something. So here, once again, really relaxed feeling on the motorway and you really can have both performance and also then the relaxed feeling. And I think also the engine here is a good price performance. It will be the entry-level engine in the US once again. And the V8 will have worse fuel economy and will just add more weight to the vehicle. That's the thing, you know. So and this is already a heavy vehicle, 2.1 tons and try to keep the weight down then, try to keep it lower, or at least not push it even further, you know. So, be, because that's the thing, you know, also when you compare it to, let's say, like, go, you go for an E-Class and S-Class, you have some more luxury features here, but you feel just that the car is indeed heavier. That's then the main difference. So, controlling that thing here while driving, the best thing is then to use the voice control because stuff is getting overcomplicated here. For example, hey Mercedes. How can I help? Start wave massage. I'm starting the wave massage for you. Thank you, so kind of you. So, ah, there it goes. Oh, no, that's the music. <laughs> so there it goes with the wave, wave massage and well, this massage program is the wave massager is the best one to me, actually, because it really goes like, you know, like in the, these dot waves and uh, across the whole body and even also, you know, on, on, the, on the seating surface there. And not all massages do that. And so that really keeps you fit also during long motorway rides. And I really, really like that. So let's switch here to the middle lane because there will be some other guys probably want to go faster than allowed. And the good thing for us for that is we can show the blind spot monitor. And there's a Mercedes GL, GLE coming up. And we can also see the blind spot monitor in the side mirror. Here we go. There's the red triangle. And when I also hit the turning indicator, I also get the acoustic warning and also the triangle. What is this? Okay. That happened. Whatever. It's a new GLE generation. You can see it in the tail limbs. You know, they are more, more. Oh, it's direct competitors. Mercedes GLE and BMW X5. So, uh, both, of course, great ride. And 
you should check out the reviews here on Autogefühl of these two, definitely. Yeah, people are do taking looks here, you know, we see it from time to time at the new S-Class. Well, but from the rear, you have to see now, all the Mercedes sedans look kind of the same now at the rear, so it's not that much, you know, uniquely standing out or something. Um, yeah. Digital instruments, by the way, so I have a clear view. The only thing is that I'm not sure if I'm like super special as for my torso height or something. I, I think not, we, uh, but I tend to keep the steering wheel lower because, you know, I'm very well in control and not doing like this, you know, and also when you want to drive a longer way, but still want to, you know, have a good control of steering wheel, you can use the left armrest here and the right armrest, and then you have like stable rest. You can keep the steering wheel straight and in control. And when you want to attack, you just lift your arms and there we go, there we go, you know? So, and for that reason, I rather keep the steering wheel a little bit lower. And then the upper part of the instruments are a little bit locked. And also there are these infrared sensors in the front of the screen saying like this, are you tired mode? And the screen is also telling me, like, move the steering wheel up, Thomas. I can't see you. Wait a minute. That's actually a good, you know, privacy mode, right? So leave me alone with you or something. I'm watching you. <laughs> Just put the steering wheel, like, you know, when you are uh, in front of your laptop and you use the sticker to, to, uh, to, to, put, to shut the cam off, actually. So uh, no one, while you're doing your Zoom video conference, can see that you're sitting in front of your desk in, you know, just in shorts or something. <laughs> so once again, it's one of the best motorway vehicles there is. So comfortable, so relaxing, so silent. That is once again really top notch. And look at that ambient lighting. You can even see it at daytime when it's a little bit darker. I just love that ambient lighting thing. The only thing that comes Above that is the Mercedes EQS. There, the even you know the, the ambient lighting looks even more kick-ass. Did I just say that? <laughs> well, and of course, now you got interested. Watch our Mercedes EQS review.